like a bear. That's enough. I am afraid, Grandmother. I must ask you to get out of that chair. Leave her alone. She's not hurting you. Of course, comrade. This is her home. Yakov Mikhailov. So, a big fish in this little pond. I have already given you an answer, Grigory. No, those churches are unregistered. They bring their own trouble on themselves. I want nothing to do with them or their secret printing. Alexander Ivanovich, we ought to help them. Just a little. 
they will give us some of the Bibles. We need more Bibles. The authorities have promised us more Bibles. The authorities have been promising They've been promising Bibles as long as any of us can remember. But they never get around to giving us any. Now these people will give us Bibles. Unless they are caught again. And if they are, we might be implicated. My job as the shepherd of this church is to protect the sheep. Pastor Yoshinko, forgive me. For our well-protected flock is starving. One KGB-approved sermon a week is a meager diet. Alexander? Lydia. Please, come in. Brother Gregory, Brother Andre. Alexander, could I speak with you privately for a moment? Oh, yes, of course. Excuse me. Lydia, what do you think of my sermons? They're fine. Well, they could be. You could have a little more. More what? More substance, perhaps? Perhaps. It's a letter from Dimitri. Are they ever going to improve this place? They've promised us new lights. They ought to give us a little paint. A special hospital. An orderly? At least he's out of that awful prison. A special hospital is a psychiatric hospital, a crazy house. Besides, that's where they keep their political prisoners. They've shortened his sentence. He'll be home in two years. Oh, I hope he's learned his lesson. Should stay away from those hooligan friends of his. If not, better if he stays where he is. Alexander, you don't mean that. He's our son. Will you write him a letter? He doesn't listen to me. If he listened to me, he wouldn't be in there at all. At least send him a message. Give me something to tell him from you. Tell him, I hope he's learned to obey the authorities. He'll never get anywhere with his confrontations. He's got to learn to compromise a little with his high and mighty principles. Tell him that.
supposed to be clean. Cleaning what? I'm new here. Those crazies. They've been strapped in their beds all night. Get busy. Citizen Mikhailov, why do you think you're being hospitalized? So that you can prevent me from serving God. So you admit belief in God? I have never denied it. Our society is based upon scientific philosophy. We consider religious conviction to be pathological. I have already been found to be sane by a group of court-appointed psychiatrists. You have been referred here to this special hospital for a more thorough diagnosis. It is possible you are suffering from latent schizophrenia. Oh, yes, I've heard of that one. A very convenient disease. It has no symptoms. This is a waste of time. Citizen Mikolev, you're arrested for printing Bibles. Do you deny it? It is our right to have Bibles. If the government won't print them, we must do it ourselves. Listen, comrade Demikolev. We are overcrowded here as it is. It would be a shame to keep you here on drugs the rest of your natural life. <laughs> Between us, I do not believe that you're crazy. I respect your beliefs. I do not ask you to deny them. You see, I am a realist. We will release you if you will give me your promise, your word of honor as a Christian believer, that you will stop printing Bibles. If I promised that, as a Christian, I would have no honor. You see our position, Mikhailov. A sane man would not reject a chance for freedom. A sane man or woman would not reject a God who loves him. Enough. Clearly, he is insane. In your condition, you are dangerous to our society. We must give you a little treatment. I think we will use the wet pack. Get the strips and the water. Water's in the sink. Fill it up. Come around and help him. Start wrapping. With wings as eagles, they shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and lie with your eyes, even as to the end.
Mikhailov, you have a simple choice. If you promise to stop printing religious propaganda, you will show that you have come back to your senses. If not, we will continue to treat you for your insanity. God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Weak things to confound the mighty. Base things and things which are not. Turn on the lights. To bring to nothing things that are. Necessity is laid upon me. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. We'll be back. Don't let him pass out. I refuse to participate in this. You already have. thinks I'm Stalin. Uh, How do you feel? I'm not sure I can feel anything. Let's sit up. Uh, ah! Oh. The straps were cutting your circulation. Oh, hmm. Hmm. oh. oh thank you. I assume you're not supposed to be here. Why are you being a good Samaritan? Good Samaritan? Well, excuse me, that's a phrase from the New Testament in the Bible. Yes, I know. I learned it from my father. Oh. Try to stand up. Your father? Who is your father? Alexander Yurchenko. He's a Baptist pastor in Leningrad. The son of Alexander Yurchenko. You know him? Yes. Your father is well known. My father is weak. He does anything they tell him to. I don't want to be like that. You helped them today. I got into it before I knew what I was doing. I should have protested. Then you would be where I am. I'm strong enough. Sooner or later, every man comes to the limit of his own strength. In a place like this, that limit can come quite quickly. You can resist them. Oh, I came to my limit a long time ago. In the camps. Young man, listen to me. Whatever strength I have now is from God. Uh, 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 oh. 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 
Who's there? <laughs> there, now stay put, you maggot! He got loose. He was up walking? How'd he get loose? <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> so, you want more freedom? Tomorrow, we'll see that you get it. Taking so long. What if they change their minds? Then we'll go home. You don't mean that. No, I don't. I want my son back. But he caused me so much trouble before he went away. My church is my whole life. I couldn't stand to lose it. Why can't he accept that? What's taking so long? <sighs> Alexander, promise me you'll give him a chance. The sun will be waiting at the next gate. And we thank thee, our Father, for the safe return of our son to this home. May we find unity and harmony once again in our family. We pray these things in the blessed and holy name of our precious Savior, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. It is good to have you home again, Dimitri. It's going to take a little time to adjust. Table manners were a little different in there. Things are different out here, too. You'll find a lot of things have changed. Our patience is paying off. Oh? All that protesting you did, it's just not necessary anymore. Didn't do any good anyway. Just got you thrown in prison while all of your hooligan friends got off. Things 
do seem to be better, Dimitri. The government seems more reasonable. They're even allowing an American evangelist to come to our church. An American? He's preaching at your church. And a press conference, too. You won't recognize the church, Dimitri. Just last week, we got new lights. <laughs> last week? You were begging for new lights when I went away. That was two years ago. That's what I mean by having patience. Eventually, they give us what we need. Eventually? When the Americans are coming with their television cameras. Dimitri, I have accepted the fact that you're not interested in my Christian beliefs. But if you're going to live in this house, you've got to show me some respect. It's not your beliefs that bother me. It's what you do and don't do. If you were in my position, you'd see things differently. I do what I think is best for my church. That's my duty as a pastor. When I was in prison, I met a man, a Christian pastor. They were torturing him. All he had to do was tell them what they wanted to hear, and he could go free. Just say the words and sign a paper. But he wouldn't do it. What a waste. No, not a waste. He believed in Christ. And he couldn't lie about it. I'm sure he was a very brave man, and I can see how you were impressed by him. But some of us have to deal with the realities of everyday life. We don't have time for some dramatic gesture. It doesn't have to be a dramatic gesture. What about the restrictions the KGB puts on your preaching? I preach whatever God lays on my heart. Papa. The KGB forbids you from mentioning certain parts of the Bible from the pulpit, and you know it. All right. Some of what you say may be true in the past, but things are changing, and we should be grateful. Why? They're only allowing you the rights you should have had all along. It's because of our patience that things are getting better. If there are changes, I think it's because of people like that preacher in the prison because of his courage and his protests. Maybe God does hear the prayers of a man like that. Look, Dimitri, come to hear the American. I think you'll be surprised at what you hear. Not church. I won't go to church. A press conference then? Come to that. I am pleased to take this opportunity to announce that the delegates of the All Union Council and I have concluded an historic agreement with the Soviet government. A large shipment of Bibles printed in the Russian language has been shipped by railway from Western Europe. They should be arriving here in the Soviet Union at any time. Like many of my fellow Americans, I ministered for years, believing that Bibles were not permitted in the Soviet Union. But my gracious hosts, or should I say my friends, have assured me there is nothing in the Soviet Constitution that prohibits Soviet citizens from having Bibles. Mother, they've never allowed Bibles. You know, I'd like to do something special here. I wonder how many of you here today, how many of you own a Bible? Hold up your hand if you have a Bible in your family. Well, this is, this is wonderful. It certainly confirms everything that my Soviet colleagues have been saying. I have not seen one shred of evidence of religious oppression during my entire tour of the Soviet Union. 
mother. That man in the front row, who is that? That's the Minister for Soviet Religious Affairs, General Smirov. He's very powerful. It's a lie! It's a lie! Christians suffer persecution! It's illegal to own a Bible! It's a lie! Alexander Yurchenko was on his way. Do you know what this is? Of course. A, a Bible. Have you looked at it? Comrade General, that book exemplifies the decadence of Western culture. Such religious teachings have no place in the modern Soviet society. The new Soviet man rejects such... Stop it, Gushin. Have you looked at this book, how it's made? It's Russian. They're printing these things right here in the Soviet Union. In Leningrad, right under our noses. We've arrested many of these Bible printing teams. Yes, and whenever we do, another pops up somewhere else. Pah, I hate these Christians. Whatever we do to them, they say it's God's will. They're too stubborn to know when they're beaten. Comrade General, he's here. Well, at least here's one Christian that knows how to get along with us. Welcome, Alexander Ivanovich. Have a chair, my friend. How is your health? Better. You created an embarrassment for us yesterday. Your son and that girl. Comrade Smirov, it was not as it seemed. Dmitri doesn't even know that girl. Well, suppose we accept this story. The whole world saw your son holding up that subversive banner. It was bad judgment on your part to have him there at all. And bad judgment is something we cannot tolerate in a man in your position. Too bad, really. Things seem to have gone so well lately. Your church's improvements. Your congregation is docile, no troublemakers. You have everything you need. Enough Bibles. And now this problem with your son. And I wonder, what do you plan to do about it? I... You know how young people are today. They won't listen to their parents. Now, you listen to me. That boy's an embarrassment to us. If you can't handle him, we will. But he's my son. What do you expect me to do? Well, that depends upon how much you value your appointment, Pastor. What are you going to do with Dimitri? Nothing for now. I've released him. He's your problem now. Are you going to release the girl? I already have. Do you think that's... You surprise me. The picture of that boy and that girl have appeared in all the papers of the West. Couldn't do anything else under the circumstances. You want me to keep an eye on them? Of course. We can always arrest them when they become old news. Oh, by the way, there's something else. The girl's father. Mikolev? He's due for release soon. Why don't we just extend his sentence again? We can't now. There's a policy of tolerance for these religious criminals. I hate to see him go free. He was hard to catch last time. I know these Christians. He'll go right back to his Bible printing as a cockroach goes back to his hole. And when he does, he'll lead you to a big printing operation. What about our new policy? Politicians come and go, but the KGB is always here. And as long as we exist, 
we decide what policy really is. And I want this Bible printing operation to stop. Dimitri, is that you? No, it's not. Where is he? I don't know. He didn't say. I'll bet he didn't. He hasn't been in this house a week before he's up to his old tricks. Alexander, he hasn't done anything. Don't tell me that. I could see him up there. Well, I'll tell you. This is going to stop right now or... Hello. No, he's not here. I've no idea. Who is this? Yuri Eisenberg. I should have known. So, you remember me, Alexander Ivanovich. I'm flattered. I remember you. And I want you to leave my son alone. He wants nothing to do with you. Maybe. But I'll have to hear that from him. I don't want you calling here again. I won't let him talk to you. You have no right to tell me that. I'll just keep trying until I... Where have you been? Just out? Getting reacquainted with- I know what you're doing. You're out getting in trouble again. Only this time, you're getting me in trouble too. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean the way you acted at the press conference. I should have known you weren't there just to please me. You only went there to protest, didn't you? I only went there to please mother. But after what I heard there, I'm glad somebody protested. That whole thing was nothing but a circus. What do you mean? None of those people will ever see any Bibles. You know they won't. This time, they promised it will be different. It was the biggest lie I've ever seen. Everyone in this country longs for a word of truth. And you'd think they could at least get it in church. Don't answer that. Why not? Just let it ring. Hello. Yes. Yuri. Yes, of course I would. Where? About an hour. All right. I'll be there. So you choose to go back to your old ways? I choose to go and see an old friend. If you leave this house now, don't bother to come back. Don't worry. I don't want to see this place again. Well, I don't want you here either. If you aren't living here, maybe they won't blame me for your criminal behavior. Galina Mikolev. I'm Sergei. Come in. This is my wife, Luba. These are for you. Thank you. I want to thank you both for offering us your home. I hope you find it suitable. This way.
This end, I thought, could be concealed. A little small, perhaps. No, this is more space than usual. There's electric power here. Yes, this will do nicely. There is one more thing. I want to be sure you understand. If the KGB find us, you may be arrested. And they certainly will confiscate this house. We know the risk. This is our service to Christ. Good. Good. Whatever happens will be for God's glory. How did you know it was out? Where did you get this? Still the man who can get anything for anybody at any time. What I want to know is, with a stunt like this, why aren't you on your way to Siberia? Who knows why the KGB do what they do? They just let me go. With a stern warning. Mm. So, what do you do now? We go back to work where we left off. It'll be good to see the others again. Dimitri, uh... There have been a lot of changes since you went away. Yes, I'm sure. Yuri, there's more to do than we thought. If you could see what I saw at that hospital. Dimitri. Innocent men kept on drugs like vegetables. They don't need prisons anymore. They just treat people for their crimes against the state. We've got to let people know what's going on. Dimitri, the others... Without you, they, they drifted apart. Protesting just doesn't seem to be worth it anymore. There have been some changes. The changes are superficial. The KGB can still do whatever they want. Maybe, but the group doesn't exist anymore. Some are even married. Have families. Then you and I can do it. Not anymore. I want to go to Israel. I've applied for an exit visa. Dina already has hers. Dina? I too am married. I have a duty to her now. Why you? You're married? I don't believe it. Congratulations. Why don't you come home with me? I want you to meet her. She's a great cook. Well, I can't go back to my father's house. Then it's settled, huh? Come on. Why didn't you invite me to the wedding? Didn't you get my invitation? <laughs> you mean you aren't legally married? They refuse to marry us at the palace of weddings. Because you're Jewish? Mostly because we want to leave the country. But we finally found an old rabbi who agreed to perform the ceremony. So, tell me, brother, am I married or not? The state says no. Me, I say we are very much married. <laughs> Dina! She's probably in the kitchen. Dina, we have a guest. Please, they're almost done. Remember the friend I told you about, Dmitri Yurchenko. This is him. I've heard a lot about you. Your vegetables are cooked enough. You will stay and eat with us. Four families. One kitchen. She seems very nice. Oh, she's the best. Mm. 
Even if I want to mind my own business, I can't. It's like somebody won't let me. Who's that girl? I wish I knew. I'd like to see her again. I've got to find a job. You won't find a good job. Not with your record. I know. I should be a hypocrite like everybody else. Have a job, get married, raise my children to be loyal Soviet citizens. You're not that kind of person. That's easy for you to say. You're leaving. But what about me? Either I go along with the system like my father does, or I starve. Stay here, with us. Jobs aren't a problem, if you aren't particular. Well, how do I get one? Well, when the atheistic government wouldn't allow us to marry, we resorted to the church, yes? Well, I'm not going to the church. To... And when the socialist state won't give me a job, what do I resort to? Capitalism. The black market. you do? Just got a half month's wage for a pair of blue jeans. Now you see why we like capitalism so much. We'll bring more merchandise tomorrow now that you see how easy it is. Dimitri. Excuse me, I'll see you later. Let me help you with that. Thank you. I don't need any help. Don't you remember me? Should I? Yes, you should. At the press conference, you threw your banner to me. I just threw it. You were in the wrong place. No. I saw your eyes. You threw it to me deliberately. I'd like to know why. I don't know. You weren't applauding with the others. I thought you were on our side. Our side? So I was wrong. I've got to go now. Presenting at the press conference. Please. I can't. Not now. All right, then when? Get off when I do. me you're so desperate to know. Well, it might be nice to know your name. Look, when I threw that banner at you at the press conference, I thought you were there to protest. I didn't realize that Alexander Yurchenko was your father. I was mistaken. I'm sorry. No, wait. 
You don't understand. I don't understand how you and your father can call yourselves Christians. How you can so blatantly deny the persecution of believers your father knows personally. His friends. Like my father. That press conference served no purpose. Except to prove the weakness of the registered churches. Look. Don't put me in the same mold as my father. I've tried protesting against all that. I spent two years in a psychiatric hospital paying for it. And I don't claim to be a Christian. My father and I don't get along too well. I see. Where are you going? Home. Oh. I'll walk you there. You will have to show me the way. After the press conference, what did they do to you? Not much. They arrested me, kept me a few hours, asked me a lot of questions. Then they let me go. You act like that's nothing. Well, it isn't. There are plenty of men and women who have served five-year terms in labor camps, who are doing much less than I did. My own father was just released. Here we are. You mean your father is home now? Is the elevator working today? I don't know why I bother to ask. You don't need to come up. I'd like to see you again. I don't think that would be a good idea. Please. All right. Come to my church. Church? Where is it? Sunday morning at that last bus stop. Get on bus number 12, 9 o'clock. Wait. I still don't know your name. Galena. Bless you for your help.
Excuse me. May I sit here? Do you have to work on Sunday? No, I... I'm going to church. To church? Not many your age attend church. What church? I'm not sure. Not sure? I'm waiting for someone here. Oh. Hey, comrade, this person, what does he look like? She. She? A young Soviet couple meeting for church. This is unusual. Do you do this often? That's none of your business. Well, I do believe a visit to church this morning will improve your disposition. It's nice to meet you. church service. I guess I should warn you. If anything should happen today, anything unusual, don't do anything. Just walk away. What are you talking about? The KGB. Sometimes they like to amuse themselves by breaking up our services. How do they know where you meet? I thought the meeting was secret. No, not secret. We just don't advertise ahead of time. And why do you meet out here? The state had need of our prayer house. <laughs> they confiscated it, and then they tore it down. Unfortunately, it was the home of two of our oldest church members. And why do they do it? Because we're not registered. Like my father's church. Registered churches aren't allowed to do a lot of the things a Christian church ought to do. right to worship is guaranteed in the Constitution. He's lying. young people here and children. That's not allowed in my father's church. Well, it's not allowed here either.
and sisters in Christ, today is the day we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We invite to this table you who have trusted in Christ, you who have chosen to follow in his footsteps. Our Lord said, this bread is my body. Take and eat. What is it, trouble? Probably. It's Major Gustin. And this couple. Stop! This is an illegal meeting. You're all breaking the law. And this cup. This meeting is over. Go to your home. Christ said, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. These people are criminals. So often as you like eat children. this bread and drink this cup. Get these people out of here. So do you in remembrance of me. What they do to him? Arrest him. They also like to arrest new visitors. Let's get him out of here. I can't imagine my father doing something like this. The service is over. That's an illegal meeting. Return to your home. Hey, move. Go. How'd you find them? Tip from a nosy neighbor, a concerned citizen major. Well, they'd barely started. We caught them all. Did you catch Jakob Mikalev? He wasn't there. I saw the report of that religious meeting you broke up. He wasn't there either, was he? No. Then where was he? The truth is, you've lost him. You don't know where he is. It's only been a few days. We'll find him again. I doubt that. He's gone back to printing Bibles as I told you he would. You've missed your chance. Well, this should put him out of business for a while. I wonder about that. This looks like a small operation. They're printing religious tracts here. It's still criminal activity. The point is, Major, if they're not printing Bibles here, they're printing Bibles somewhere else. Find out where that is and you'll have your man. We'll find him. 
How? He has about four times as much brains as you do. We'll watch his family. He has a son, as well as a daughter. Yes, you do that. Have these religious people taught you how to pray? You better pray that you find him. It's your last chance. inside. Sergey. Sergey, the plumber's here. It's about time you got here. This way. Hello, Olga. We have a plumber. Do you need any work done? Pastor Mikhailov, Galina never mentioned a printing leader would be you. She did not know. I was released only recently. To God be the glory. <laughs> it's a great honor to have you here. Uh, the honor is mine. Now, I wonder if you will oh, show me. Of course. Where... I'm sorry. Follow me. Uh. <laughs> Good arrangements. I congratulate you. If you need any work done downstairs, I really am a plumber. Has all the paper come and the ink? It's all here except for the plates. My son Stepan will bring the printing plates. And the rest of the team will begin to arrive day after tomorrow. Right. The men can sleep here. And that area we can curtain for the women. Now, all I need to do is assemble this pile of metal into a working press before the others get here. for coming here so late. No, it's fine. Galena's here. I hope I'm not disturbing you. Of course not. But I have to go out on an errand. I actually wanted to talk to Stepan, or even to your father. My father isn't here. He's away on business. I just, uh, I wanted to thank you for taking me to the service. I was hoping I could go again. I thought maybe you could tell me where I could meet you. Of course. Please, sit down. You two will excuse me. I better go before it gets any later. Be careful. I can't get over what I saw out there in the forest. 
KGB thugs throwing everybody around, dragging away your pastors, and everybody singing hymns calmly. Even the children. No screaming. No fear. I've never seen people act like that. I feel like I want to be a part of what you do. We're a church, that's all. What do you think we do? You stand up against them. You have moral courage. I wish my father could, could see what a church ought to be like. Dimitri, we're not a political group. We're not trying to change the government or the economic system. Everything we do is for the sake of Jesus Christ. We just want to preach the gospel to those who need it. You mean like me? Maybe like you. What do you think? Maybe. Maybe that's why I came here. But look, I've heard all this before. My father's a pastor, remember? Did your father ever talk to you about salvation? Sure. But what my father said never meant much to me. My father talks about God, but he acts like the KGB is running the universe. I think you're avoiding the question. Have you ever trusted Christ? No. Why not? You already know the gospel. Why can't you accept it? Because it never did my father any good. He's a hypocrite. You can't use your father for an excuse. The Bible says that everyone must give account of himself before God. But I don't want to be like him. He's weak. He won't stand up to them. And you're strong enough? I'm strong enough. I went to prison because I wouldn't give in to them. Prison. Were you strong enough there? No. No, I wasn't. I didn't even realize what they were doing until... I thought they were just using me to torture another prisoner. A Christian. It wasn't until afterwards that I realized they were really breaking me. God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. None of us is strong enough, Dimitri. I know. That's why I came here. Those people at the church service have what I need. What you need is to accept Christ. Yes. The Bible says that all men are sinners and that Christ died for your sins. I know that you know that already. But knowing isn't enough. You need to accept what God has offered you. Salvation in Christ. If I do this, I'll be admitting my father was right. But my father was right. Come in. Ah. 
Papa. I want you to baptize me. You understand that baptism is not a requirement for heaven. You must... I already have. I have asked for God's forgiveness. And he's given it to me because Christ paid for my sins. I've trusted him for salvation. Dimitri, my son, thank God. Thank God. God is good. Papa, I know you tried to tell me about this when I was younger. I just want you to know that I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. It doesn't matter. Will you baptize me? Of course. Whenever you want. We can do it now if you're ready. Now? I thought we would do it on Sunday at the regular service with others. I don't think that would be wise. Why not? To do it publicly, we must submit your name for permission to baptize. Submit to who? To the Office of Religious Affairs. To Smirov? It's what we always do. You mean the KGB decides who can be baptized? Well then, just give them my name. They wouldn't approve you. Why not? They almost never approve anyone under 30 years of age. Not even your own son? You have a record. You are considered a troublemaker. Then don't ask them. Let's just do it. Yes, exactly. We'll just baptize you privately. Uh, no. The whole idea is to follow the Lord publicly. Jesus was baptized publicly, wasn't he? That's what I want to do. Dimitri, we can't do everything we want. If we obey their laws, at least they give us some freedom. Freedom to do what? To do exactly what they want? What kind of freedom is that? If we are patient, the government may change its policies. Papa, one thing you did for me when I was little was to make me learn Bible verses. It's surprising how many I still remember. But there's one verse I've found that you never taught me. It says we ought to obey God rather than men. When times are hard, God understands? No. It's wrong to allow the state to control the church. And I think we should take a stand against it. I want to be baptized publicly. And I want you to do it. Will you baptize me? You don't understand my position. I'll lose my church. They'll take it away from me. Will you do it? Papa, please. I will baptize you. Privately.
Father in heaven, we thank thee for these men and women who have chosen to follow thee publicly in baptism. We pray that their courage may be a testimony before all men of their obedience to their Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Dmitry Yurchenko, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry I'm late. I had to make a special delivery this morning. Yeah? What's in the bag? Not yet. You'll know someday when it's finished. Galena tells me you're a real help to the church. Yeah? Thanks. I'd feel a lot better if I could get a real job. <laughs> Don't worry about it. If Smirov wants you to have a job, you'll get one. But until he does, you won't find anything. I feel like I'm living on charity. Christian charity. That's what we're here for. You're not the first one. What's wrong? That was a camera shutter. Are you being followed? I haven't been so far. They must have been watching you. I'm afraid we'll have to finish this talk later. I can't afford any problems today. What do we do? Don't do anything. I'm going to leave. They won't bother you if I'm gone. Give my love to Galena. That one is a son of Mikolev. I think we need to see what's in that bag. Back up. You think he's in there? He's got to be. Get moving.
forgot to warn my father. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. This is the Bible. You're printing Bibles. Stefan was our courier. It was his job to carry the plates back and forth. And your father is in danger. I've got to tell him. I'm going with you. Galena. Sergey. Come in. Galena, we weren't expecting. It's all right, Sergey. This is my friend, Dmitry Yurchenko. I've got to see my father. Your father? Why would your father? Stepan is. Stepan has had an accident. I've got to see father. Stepan? An accident? A KGB accident. Yakov Nikolaevich, someone is here. <laughs> What's wrong, child? What is it? He killed his step on. How do you know this? Dimitri saw it. What happened? The KGB were chasing him. He almost got away, but there was an accident. <laughs> he was carrying these. I'm afraid they got some of them.
All right. I have lost my son, but Stepan is with his Savior. There will be time later for our grief. Now we have work to do. We've discussed this possibility many times before, and you all know what to do. When you leave, be sure to take with you anything that can be personally incriminating. What is he talking Pictures, about? Personal letters. It's our standard procedure. The first sign of trouble from the KGB, we shut down the operation and leave. Be sure to be ready. What if the KGB don't find it? I presume this is the young man I've been hearing about? Yes, Papa. This is Dmitri. Dmitri Alexandrovich. I'm happy to see you again. So it is you. I... I don't know what to say. You already know each other? We once spent a short time together. I'm sorry for what I did to you. The important thing, as Galena has told me, is that you have found Christ. It was Stepan who... I'm glad you brought him here. Sergei was skeptical. It doesn't matter. We'll have to leave immediately. But you can't just leave all this. If we leave it, we lose a few months' work. But it can be done again someplace else. An experienced printing team is harder to replace. That makes sense. You can't risk the printing team. But why can't somebody else get the Bibles out? There isn't time. We take them out the same way we brought them in. It takes months. But there must be a way. It's worth a chance. What if I could get a truck? You can get a truck? I think so. I know somebody who can get almost anything. We can't take a chance. We'd never make it. Not we. I can get it. There isn't time. There might be. Look, I know you have to follow your emergency procedures, but I don't. Just tell me where to deliver them. Dimitri. We're so close. We can't give up now. Papa, tell him. Young man, you haven't the slightest idea what you're suggesting. But I think you're right. We are too close to stop now. Stepan died for these Bibles. We've got to try to get them out. I can get the truck by tomorrow. We'll need at least that much time to prepare. We may have a week or a few hours. Let's get busy. They're printing Bibles. I want to know where. Look for anything. There's got to be a lead here somewhere. Oranges. Dimitri, you are to come in here. Oh. <laughs> I haven't seen you in months. Since last summer. You were uh, about to be baptized, I think. And you wanted to convert me, too. I still do. Me, a Jew, emigrating to Israel? How would that look? How it looks isn't important. Dimitri, I appreciate your concern for my soul. But not now. Tell me about yourself. What are you doing? Yuri. I need your help. You've got it. Are you in trouble? Not yet. 
I need a truck. Truck? What for? I can't tell you. Oh, of course. Uh, what I meant was, what kind of truck? How big? One that could carry, say, 4,000 kilos of paper. 4,000 kilos? I'll say one thing, you haven't changed. When you go for something, you go for it in a big way. Look, Dimitri, I don't want to know what you're involved in. But whatever it is, there'll be a risk. I'm prepared for that. I know you are, but a truck is hard to hide. I don't want to hide it. And I'll only need it one night. When do you want it? I need it tomorrow. Sure. Why not? Where do you want me to deliver it? What do you have? Printing plates. It confirms our suspicions. They're printing Bibles. The question is where? These photographs were taken before and after the accident. The dead boy is Stepan Mikalev. We found these in his pocket. Bus transfers. According to the bus routes, he came from across the river. So he's across the river. Anything else? Oranges. Oranges? The boy was carrying oranges. And I found more in the girl's apartment this morning. So? You can't get oranges in Leningrad in the middle of winter. I did some checking. There's one little shop that's had several allotments of fresh fruit. It seems the shop manager has a brother-in-law in the Ministry of Agriculture. We're not interested in that minor corruption. What about our business? That shop is located near one of the stops of this bus route. Oh, he's across the river. And probably somewhere near that shop. We have something else. I found this in the girl's apartment. I know it's a long shot, but this is the type of house they always use. Well, suppose this is the house. There are no street numbers. How do you propose to find it? Look above the house. Here in the background. This is the fortress. See how the spire lines up with the house. Now, here is the Neva River. Here's the fortress. The house can only be located in this area. Well, Major, it looks like you might be onto something here. But you'll have to move quickly if you don't have much time. How do you know? This plate is a part of the book they call the Revelation. The last book of the Bible. They're almost finished. Well, you go and try to find the house. I'll go find the boy. Uh, Dmitry Yurchenko? Uh, he escaped from the scene with some of the plates. His father will tell me where to find him. What if he doesn't know? I'll make him wish he did. Comrade Smirov, I, this is an unexpected Alexander Ivanovich, come here out of friendship. I'm afraid your son's in trouble again. Dmitri, 
Yes, he's engaged in subversive activity. Oh, I don't believe it. Dimitri may be... You'll recognize him, I'm sure. It's a clear print. But there is no proof that Dimitri... Oh, there's proof. And Dimitri has it. That's why you're going to tell me where he is. You don't have him. He isn't... No, but it's only a question of time. We'll get him. It'd be easier on him and on you if you'd tell us where he is. I don't know. I don't know anything about this. I suppose if you did, you would of course tell us. Well, I, of course I... Dimitri is my son. Listen to me. We've had lots of trouble with this case and it turns out that your son's right in the middle of it. Bibles. Would you believe he's been printing Bibles? Should have arrested him months ago, but for your sake, I did not. Now I want him. Where is he? How, how can you do this in God's house? God's house? Where is God? I don't see him anywhere around here. Why doesn't he do something? Apparently, he has more patience than I do. You better find your son. Tell me where he is. Please, don't. Don't ask me to hunt down my own son. Oh, you'll find him. He's an enemy of the state. It's your duty. Besides, you have so much to lose here. My church. How can you call it your church when I can take it away from you any time I want? You find him. Give him to me. Turn out these lights. No, not my son. You can't have my son. Yuri, I must see Yuri. It's urgent. Who are you? Alexander Yershenko, Dmitri's father. I've got to talk with Yuri. What do you want? I want my son. Where is Dmitri? Why come here? How should I know? Don't lie to me. You know where he is. How can you withhold information from me? And what right do you have to come in here and demand such things? Even if I knew where he was, I wouldn't tell you. Not tell me? But I'm his father. You can trust me. I beg your pardon, but I cannot trust you. As far as I know, you're working for Smirov in the KGB. No, that's not true. You've got to help me. Out of your friendship for Dmitri. We both want what's best for him. Don't be a hypocrite. 
You've never wanted what's best for Dimitri, and you never cared about me either. When Dimitri had been a believing Christian for two days, he was here trying to tell me what he had found. When have you ever told me about your Christ? You're right. It's all true. All right. You don't trust me. But do you know what Dimitri is doing? No. Look. Come in. Please, sit down. I just had a visit from Smirov. He knows what Dmitri is doing. If he catches him... Does he know where Dmitri is? I don't think so, but he's very close. I thought if I got to Dimitri first and warned him... I think... Dimitri knows he's in danger. If you knew your son better, you'd know that personal safety isn't important to him. I see what you must think of me. But you've got to believe me. Things are different now. What Smirov said. He expected me to turn in my own son. I wouldn't do it. I want to help Dmitri if I can. And if I can't, I at least want to tell him I... All I know is I delivered a truck to an address. I'll get you that. The truck may be a problem. He wanted it on short notice. It's easy to find a driver willing to rent his boss's truck. But it's also easy to trace. Just over the October Bridge, near the river. Yes, Lieutenant? Sir, Major Gustian just called in. He's found the house, something about a truck. He's checking it out personally, but he wanted you to know. Well, you tell Major Gushkin he'll get all the credit he deserves for his efforts. You have an address? Yes, sir. We'll go and see what the Major's found. Major Gustin, requesting militia assistance. We are in pursuit of a green truck. There he is. This is Major Gustin. We request militia assistance. He's now crossing the October Bridge. We're headed towards Zivarovsky. Isn't that near here? Yes, sir. 
Well, let's go give them some help. to believe this truck contains what we've been looking for. So, your father's going to be very disappointed in you. I tried to warn him that you were heading for trouble. General Smirov, here it is. This is his doing. If you have any sense, you'll get in your car and go back to that house as fast as you can. Maybe you can still catch him, but I doubt it. Well, don't stand there like an idiot. Get going. You there, children. Do you live here? No, I don't, sir. What is it? I can't tell. Not the police. What shall we do? I don't... 
Oh, it's probably just somebody lost looking for directions. Go down, see what they want. You must let me in. I know you are there. All right, be quiet. Most people are sleeping. Be quiet. What do you want? I'm looking for someone. It's very important. I have a message for him. Please, it's urgent. Who is it? It's my son, Dimitri. Oh, I know he's here. Dimitri! Please! There's nobody here by that. Dimitri! If you're here, come to me. Please! Please! He's not here. Please, go! You? Welcome, Alexander Ivanovich. Mikolev, where's my son? He's not here. I must warn him he is in danger. He's aware of that, I can assure you. Where is he? He's my son. I don't want to lose him. Your son is doing something that is very important to him. And I believe to God. What is going to happen to him? I can't say. I hope he can escape. But if not, he's fully prepared, as we all are, to suffer whatever is necessary for the word of God. Yes, he would be. I just wanted to tell him I understand. I'm sorry, my friend. Truly sorry. To have a son and lose him is... You'd better go now. They'll be here soon. I want to help. There's nothing you can do. You'll just get yourself into trouble. Oh, I don't care. I want to help you. I want to beat Smirov. Just once. All right. I don't have time to argue. All right, Luba, you've done enough. You and Sergei should go now. There's no need for you to stay. Everything's done. Oh, thank you. I'll stay. It's them! It's Smirov himself. Go oh, cover the back. from here. State security, open up. Now we've got to move quickly. You're going to try to get away? We're not martyrs. Not on purpose. Get your hat. You want me to go with you? Do you want our friend Smirov to find you here? Open the door! Sit down. Don't waste time here. It'll be the cellar or the attic. Turn off the light. Hurry. Major.
it right there. Let's go. Move. What's down that hill? The Neva River. And all Leningrad beyond it, huh? He's the one. Around back, down the hill. Move! Bring him inside. Confiscate this house. That's illegal. You have no evidence. Do you smell that? That's printer's ink. That's all the evidence we need. But this house has been in my family for generations. Well, don't you think it's about time we took it away from you and gave it to some honest Soviet citizens? We could put four families in this house. Papa. Ah, uh, Papa can't do anything for you now. He's in more trouble than you are. You're only a hooligan, a nuisance. He's a traitor. What did you do? He helped a criminal escape. 
Dimitri. I want you to know. Get him out of here. I know. I understand. Dimitri, don't let them change you. Dimitri, Christ will be with you. Dimitri, I love you. You're a fool. You've lost your church. Now you've lost your son. And you have lost Yakov and the whole printing team and all the Bibles. My church never belonged to me. It was always yours. Dimitri has found Christ. And for the first time in 20 years, I really have a son. All because of you. Now you whisper to me, comrade general, who is the fool? Get him out of my sight. <laughs>